And there's so much wrong with pregnancy and delivery that the OB community is not addressing. For instance, a third of the world's female population has vaginal dysbiosis. That is a disrupted vaginal microbiome. By the way, the vaginal microbiome is much simpler than the gastrointestinal microbiome. And it's very clear that a healthy microbiome in the vagina is lots of lactobacillus species, but especially lactobacillus crispatus, real important microbe. An unhealthy vaginal microbiome, loss of crispatus, and proliferation of species like Gardnerella vaginalis and some fecal microbes. A third of the world's population of females has that situation. When there's a disruption of the vaginal microbiome, it inflames the cervix, and that causes relax premature relaxation of the cervix. Well, that increases a woman's likelihood of having a miscarriage, of having premature delivery. If a woman delivers a child at 30 weeks, that child has problems for a lifetime. Neurological impairment, psychological problems, immune problems. Well, there are things that you can do, including correct the vaginal microbiome. So addressing the vaginal microbiome is a major advantage, a major factor in the vaginal microbiome. Vitamin D, so simple. But almost no pregnant moms are told that vitamin D is critical for the vaginal microbiome, as is restoration of lactobacillus crispatus. Then there's the bifidobacter infantis. And then, of course, C-section, where the child is deprived of passage through the birth canal and acquiring the important microbes as they do that. Some OBs have been doing this, or pediatricians, swabbing a woman's vagina after delivery and swabbing the baby's mouth. That has proved to not be effective. So that is not a second best, doesn't work. That this idea that C-section is somehow superior is absolute nonsense. And then of course, a lot of moms, you know, breastfeeding is very difficult, but a mom at least has to try. That's yet another way that the mom passes on microbes and passes on what are called human milk oligosaccharides. So if the baby lacks that bifidobacterium infantis, it cannot metabolize those human milk oligosaccharides. But if you restore bifidobacterium infantis, and by the way, it's available as a commercial probiotic. It's called Avivo, E-V-I-V-O. So restore that microbe to that child. Baby breastfeeds. It's able to metabolize now the human milk oligosaccharides that encourages better neurological maturation. Another thing is the woman should not be overweight or insulin resistant. That has major implications for the health of the baby and mom. Well, how do you do that? The doctor says take drugs, take metformin, take these other drugs. I say no. Address the diet and nutrients that are lacking that reverse insulin resistance. So it's the basic stuff. No wheat, no grains, no sugars, because they raise blood sugar and insulin. Address common nutrient deficiencies that amplify insulin resistance, magnesium, omega-3 fatty acids, iodine, and vitamin D. And address your microbiome, your gastrointestinal microbiome, especially if you have SIBO, because that also contributes to insulin resistance. So this is a problem for ladies with polycystic ovary syndrome, for instance. These are ladies who are very prone to high blood pressure, high triglycerides, diabetes and prediabetes, facial hair and hair elsewhere, higher testosterone, and they're typically infertile. So they do this to reverse insulin resistance, diet those nutrients address bowel flora and they're happy moms now they're fertile and they're no longer hypertensive they're no longer pre-diabetic they no longer have high testosterone high in other words we're not going to treat those things we're going to address the factors that allowed it to emerge in the first place same thing with a pregnant woman or woman contemplating pregnancy. Don't think you're going to treat things. Address the factors that allowed problems like miscarriage or premature delivery to emerge. 